Hello, my name is Colleen Bryant. I am a going into my second year as a third grade teacher at Hope Semper, uh, as well as going into my second year as a Teach for America Corps member. And I would like to talk to you today about student self-assessment. So a couple of things that teachers need to keep in mind with student self-assessment are, firstly, expectations. Students need to be very aware of what the success criteria are for an assignment. If they're going to be given autonomy and authority over assessing their work, they need to know how to apply those criteria to their work. So students must be able to describe what a successful example of that assignment looks like in detail. Um, and that can be accomplished either through providing students with a rubric um, or providing them with an exemplar or some, some combination of both of those. Uh, but then students also need guided practice or modeling of what self-assessment looks like. So that could easily be done by providing students with an exemplar and a non-exemplar and guiding student discussion around why is this one an exemplar and why is this not exemplar, why is what makes this uh, what makes this version more successful? So students get to kind of see that think out loud process so that they know um, kind of what they're looking for and, and also how to determine what is successful and what is not. Um, secondly, student self-assessment needs to be formative, not summative. So self-assessment should not be associated with official grades. Self-evaluation is a separate topic and self-evaluation is when students give themselves a grade after they've completed an assignment. Self-assessment is formative, so it's assessing their progress, assessing where their work is, so that they can improve their performance moving forward, not just reflect on previous performances looking backward. So self-assessment might be more useful for something like, could be used for, like, for something such as pre-assessment, um, but not for a um, retrospective self-evaluation. Um, Part of the reason that self-assessment needs to be uh, formative is that with self-assessment, students need feedback and they need the opportunity for self-correction. Um, students need to, like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for students to uh, find errors on their own assignment and then move on to a different topic without being able to reflect on their work. So the point of self-assessment is to reflect on an assignment and be able to improve that assignment, be able to improve their performance on that skill or that standard moving forward. Um, so it really doesn't make sense for students not have an opportunity to then apply those skills that they just reflected on through that self-assessment. And finally, some of the benefits to keep in mind with student self-assessment are um, it gives students a sense of ownership over their own learning because they are reflecting on their own work and they're not just being told that was good, that was bad but they get to think about, hmm, why, why was this good? What made this successful? How can I apply that moving forward? Um, and when students can track their own progress, they can see their own growth. And when they can see areas that um, they need to focus their attention and energy on, that might be weak points, then they have the agency with which to do so. And then when students can um, have that self-efficaciousness, they don't become as much um, as frustrated or as confused, and that leads to increased which is a huge goal for all teachers because we want students to want to learn. Um, so just to provide an example of something that I did in my own classroom um, is that I had, I noticed that my third graders were really struggling with silent reading time. And so what I did is I provided them with a rubric for them to self-assess their own silent reading time. And this rubric went from uh, incredible to oops. And there were several criteria, but I just want to focus on one specific skill. Um, so in this case, if there were, in order for students to give themselves an incredible, that would be, I read the entire time. And we talked about, hmm, what does it look like to read the entire time? What does your body look like? What, what do you sound like? And like, what are the criteria for putting yourself into this category? And then a good would be, I read most of the time. A just so-so would be, I read some of the time. And an oops is... I wasted time and didn't read most of the time. And so we talked about what does this look like? What do each of these things look like? And then students, as they went into their silent reading time, they knew what their goal was, and therefore they could self-assess that, hmm, how, how effectively did I meet this goal? And that was impossible because they really understood the expectations. And because silent reading is something that we do every day, they had an opportunity the very next day to self-correct and move forward. So um, that's just one example. I hope that you learned something about student self-assessment and that this will be moving forward.